Two police officers in Florida have been placed on administrative leave following an investigation into a viral video that showed the possibility of police brutality. You will see it and you will judge for yourselves. It is a brutal video, but before we get to it, let me give you the context. The police arrested Daniel James Dunkelberger on Hollandale Beach Boulevard on Wednesday afternoon after he was seen taking a cell phone and a charger cable from a car. So he'd burglarized the car. Uh, two taser shots failed to subdue him and he braced his body to keep from being shackled. And so uh, the cops responded in the following brutal and graphic way, just giving you that warning. No, bro, the you got on the ground before you get on the ground. Get on the ground, man, what the f***? You're right. Get on the ground. Now you gotta get on the ground. Doesn't that hurt? Yo, he didn't do anything. Stop hitting him. Stop hitting him. Turn around. Stop hitting him when he's not. He just hit him. Do not, do not hit him. I don't care. I understand that he robbed you, but he doesn't need to hit him after the fact. Everyone deserves. Due process. Know, really I understand, really I understand. Right. totally understand. But he doesn't be deserve to be hit after. after He's what? on the ground. He's handcuffed now. He was on the ground and you're hitting him. You want to see the footage? Do you want footage. to see the footage? Show me the footage. Please. 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 All right, so uh, the reason why we came across that video is because someone who had uh, the person that you hear uh, filming it uh, posted it on social media, on Twitter to be exact. And he also included the following in the tweet. Uh, police brutality in broad daylight on Hollandale Beach Drive. Police heavily beat this man uh, up, busted his head open, led him to bleed heavily. The man is known around the area to be a mentally challenged individual. So, uh, new. The press tried to get in touch with him and they haven't been able to. Uh, he's alleging that the man had um, uh, mental health issues. I, I have not confirmed that, I haven't seen any confirmation of that. But uh, there is concern about excessive force there, especially when he was already on the ground and they were still using batons to hit him. He's been charged with re resisting arrest without violence, which makes me <laughs> wonder why it took all of that. And then he, they still had to physically grab him to take him down after the beating. And so my thought is just wondering why it didn't start there. Two people, one person, he wasn't even moving when the video started. I just wondered why all the hits. And the officer had time, the officer standing up had time to argue back and forth. This guy, I'm assuming if he needs that much of a beating is dangerous and violent and scary. How do you have time to argue with someone standing, not even a part of this, if you're focused on you know, subduing a dangerous criminal? So with these uh, cop stories, we often have to like argue with people, even though we just saw the video. You just saw yeah. it, and so. But look, there maybe it is that there is an honest disagreement about people's perspectives. Like, so if somebody stole my cell phone and my charger from my car, I'd be mad. I'd be really mad, right? And I'd want him arrested. Okay. Uh, if they if they said to me, all right, now we're gonna beat him like what you just saw in the video and hit him over the head like that, do you agree? No, I do not agree. You know right? who else didn't agree? The person who was burglarized. Uh, you can also hear him in that video, uh, you know, saying that he didn't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so you you hear the remorse in in that man's voice. And I think most people understand that while it's a crime, and of course he shouldn't have done that, and he should be arrested. There's no reason why cops need to go the extra mile and start using that type of excessive force. Put him in handcuffs and that's that. Why, why does it have to get to that point where they tase him and then they take out their batons and they start hitting him with the batons? Yeah, so I get that it was, was more difficult to arrest them. And a lot of people have mental health issues and it is difficult to arrest them sometimes. Mm -hmm. We've gotta train our police better that when you run into someone who doesn't immediately follow your commands, that the correct answer is not to beat him over the head until he's bleeding heavily. And and that's unfortunately the go-to move. But you know, the, the reason I brought up honest disagreement is because I think that there are a lot of Americans that look at that and go, yeah, if somebody took my stuff, I'd want the cops to do that. 
Wow. I guarantee you there'd be wow. a, there's going to be a ton of people who watch this video and go, "Oh, you libs, you, you know, you don't know anything." And he shouldn't have been stealing. He yeah, and he should have listened to the cops. Then you don't believe in America. You don't believe in America. At least what America is supposed to be. You believe in living in a police state. You right. believe that authorities have all the right in the world to beat the hell out of someone to the oh, by the way to shoot and kill someone who's unarmed mm -hmm. if that person disrespects the officer or poses even a little bit of a, a challenge in arresting that person that's in my opinion right. not what we're supposed to support in the United States that is what you experience in an authoritarian country and if you want that then you should go live in an authoritarian country you shouldn't be in a country like this yeah and the fact that the police don't work for us to yeah. have the accountability to the fact we we elect the sh we elect people within the police department i mean we are actively involved in the process and our tax paying our tax dollars go to the police in the city of los angeles alone most of our taxes go to the police department so we should be heavily involved in how we want what what world we want to live in i don't want to live in a police state and i think the the other thing too is i'm just it i'm so boggled over how we treat people with mental health issues. And the city of Los Angeles, again, just because I know about LA County so much, is the the houser of the most mentally ill people in the US. That's got to tell you something that our, res, our resort is to have, our last resort, or our first resort maybe, is to have police use excessive force and to uh, jail mentally ill people or people who have mental health issues. And I'll say something else. Thank you for the cameraman who took that video, bravely uploaded it online. And I understand why he didn't want to reveal his identity because as we've learned in Ferguson and other places, people who in uh, Staten Island during Eric Garner's mm -hmm. murder, people who did videotape the police misbehaving, they were held to account with higher either sentencing, um, with more, um, more uh, of a heavy punishment, uh, whether it was death in some cases, than the police were. And so last thing, the police are off, are on leave with pay. One of them is on leave with pay. The other one is retired and went back to the police force. It's a weird story, but it's just, it's disgusting. That's just the way it works, yeah. Mm -hmm. They usually yeah. get paid when they're on leave as they're being investigated. And, and that's the problem with the whole culture. I mean, look at what happened with Chelsea Manning. Chelsea Manning shows yes. among the different things that she released was the Apache helicopter video where uh, our soldiers uh, mowed down not only innocent journalists, but then first responders who came to bring them to the hospital. So even if they thought, okay, we're not gonna punish them for killing the journalists because they thought the camera was a gun or something, they were careless about it, so no big deal, it's a war. We knew that the people coming to help were bringing them to the hospital and we killed them anyway. Right. But those people never got punished, but Chelsea Manning got punished for revealing it. And so that's why it's not surprising that a lot of times there are no consequences for the people in power, right. but if you reveal what they are doing wrong, there will be consequences for you. But I agree with Metha that there are acts of courage throughout the country now. And, and now we're finally getting to see what the ugly side of power looks like. Two easy ways to follow the Young Turks. One is hit the subscribe button down below, uh, then you're a TYT subscriber. And second is ring the bell. And when you do that on YouTube, you're notified of our videos.